What up, everybody? Those that are on, just getting on. Get this set up. Make sure I pin comment. All right, so if you watching on Facebook, go ahead and put your name in the comments so I can know exactly who's on. Um, obviously, you know, I can see who's on Facebook, uh, who's on Instagram, man. So, um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, definitely, uh, you know, glad to be back this week. I know last week we weren't here, but we're back. Um, so I'm just allowing the notifications to get out on Facebook and Instagram. And then I go ahead and get started. I right, give it about like 15 more seconds. So once again, if you are on Facebook right now, please drop your name in the chat. I would greatly appreciate it so I can know who's on. And, and we'll get started in about five seconds. Man, I hope everybody is safe, man. It is crazy out here in the South, especially, um, you know, out here in, in, in Nashville, man. Snowed in right about now. Um, prayers out to, to everybody in Texas um, that that are experiencing the, the power outages, snowed in, just all over the country, man, even as we are in a pandemic, man. So, uh, you know, definitely prayers out to everybody. Um, and, uh, I appreciate y'all getting on, taking the time out to get on tonight, man. If you are on Facebook, please drop your name in the chat so I can know who's watching Instagram. I already can see who's on. Um, and so with that being said, man, I'll go ahead and get started, man. What up everybody, man? It's your boy JK today. It's Thursday. So you already know what it is. It's Tackle Thursday. And today I'm tackling the topic and you tackling the topic, right? See the bigger picture, right? See the bigger picture. And the thing, the thing, you know, about the the, the title, right? So if, if if you just, you know, your first time watching Tackle Thursday, we tackle different topics every single week, right? Uh oh yeah, you know it's all about the you dog. Um, so we tackle different topics every single week. And, and, and one thing about the topics, no matter whatever the topic that we tackle. Uh, angle that I, I like to address it, whether I got guests or whether it's just me, is I like to address it from a perspective, um, looking at it, things, you know, the different perspectives, right? That that we might have a topic we tackle and we might have tackled this topic our whole life, but I challenge the perspective, the way you see it, right? And so in, in, in this week, when you look at the title, see the big bigger picture, that's all that 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 all that is is talking about perspective, right? And so I do like to give a little backstory on how I can't come up with the topics for the week. So so this particular topic, um, see the bigger picture, man. I was reading my Bible, man, and, and I was reading about David, right? And David, man, that's that's probably David probably is my um favorite character in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, outside of Jesus, but uh that he probably my favorite character because I feel like his story is so, um, it's just like his story is like an onion. You know what I'm saying? Like if you just keep reading David's stories, like David and Goliath, then it's like, you know, when he's going through it with, with, with Saul and then when he becomes king and, and all these, he just got so many different layers and so many different stages of his life that we all could, could take from it and, 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 and grow from it. Right. And the thing in this case, right is that I, I pulled from one of the events that happened in, in, in David's life, right? So David was being chased by Saul, right? Saul was trying to kill, kill David, right? He was jealous of David and he knew that David was next in line to be a king. And, and if David lived, then, he, then Saul knew that there was no chance that his son Jonathan could become king, right? So David, so Saul was trying to kill David and 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 they ended up like in these mountains or right where these caves were. So David was hiding in the cave, right? He was hiding in the cave. And while he was hiding in the cave, Saul came through and Saul ended up backing up into the cave, right? So now Saul is like looking outside, you know, outside the cave, 
but he didn't know that David and his people was back there in the cave, right? So, so David's one of David's men was like, hey, David, like, I'm paraphrasing, but right, because they humans, right? So we gotta look at it in our, you know, the human aspect. So David homeboy was like, hey, yo, like, look what God just did for you, bro. Like, he just brought your enemy right in front of you. Like, you got the chance to go kill. Saul, he right here, he been trying to kill you over and over. Now you got him right here. He don't even see you coming, right? So David was like, basically thought to himself like, yeah, bro, like you right. Like, let's take advantage of this, right? So David went and cut off a cloth of, 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 of Saul's like robe or fabric, right? He cut a cloth off, a piece of it off, right? And the moment he cut a piece of it off, God gave David revelation. God gave David, allowed David to see the bigger picture. So immediately David got a revelation and God basically spoke to David and was like, hey, bro, like, I need you to see the bigger picture. Like, I know that Saul been trying to kill you, but he's still my anointed. He's still anointed. St he's still in position of king. So even though he's tried to kill you, and I know that that's, just, that's how you're looking at it, you got to take a step back and see the bigger picture, right? And so David was able to see the bigger picture and realize like, man, you know, yeah, I can kill Saul right now, but the bigger picture is that this is still God's anointed king, right? And so in life, likewise, just like David, right? There are times where we got to take a step back and see the bigger picture. Before we make a huge decision, we got to take a step back and see the bigger picture, right? And, and, and the thing what we got to be aware of is that there are people in our lives that have limited view of our situation, or they might not be privy to the information that you may be privy to, right? So they may be saying, just like David Homeboy, David Homeboy was like, hey, hey, because David Homeboy didn't see the big picture. All David Homeboy was like, hey, look, there is Saul. That's who been trying to kill you. Go get him. But David had this had this conversation with God and had this, you know, had the, the wherewithal to see the bigger picture and realize like, you know what? Like, it's bigger than me just getting retaliation on Saul. It's bigger than that. And, and and in life, there are people in our lives that that want us to, hey, you need to do this with your life. You need to do that, right? You need to make this decision. You need to go do this with your money or to do that. And 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 they're they're giving you this advice without the ability to see the whole picture. See, some people want you want to make a decision about something and all they got is a piece of your puzzle, right? See, I I um you know, me and my son, we, 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 it's this puzzle, this, uh, I, I want to say it's uh PJ Mass puzzle, right? And so if I give my son one piece of the puzzle, it's going to frustrate him. Cause he's like, dad, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, I, I don't know if this is an end piece, a middle piece, where am, where am I supposed to do? But when I, when we take a step back and I give him the whole box, and he can see the big picture. Now he's able to see like, ah, oh, I know where this little piece goes because I see the bigger picture, right? And so in life, we got to understand that, hey, look, man, like we got to take a step back, right? And, 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 and we got to understand that there are some roles in our lives that require us. I know, especially as men, right? So, so God has, you know, ordained the man, um, you know, and when you look at it, how the the how God intends for the family dynamic to be right, the husband is the is the covering of the family, right? And so, as a husband, it is my job, my responsibility to be able to uh, be forward thinking, to be uh, to think progressively, to be able to think about all the options, to be able to think down the road. Why? Because my, my, my wife and my kids, they, they are dependent on me to see the big picture as a husband, right? Because if I'm the covering, if I'm the head, right, of my family, I can't be, I can't be, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 I can't get so close to the situation that I'm blinded and, and I have the, inab and I'm, have the inability to see the whole picture, 
So I got to be able to say, you know what? As the head of this family, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I could easily make this decision. I could easily make that decision. But let me take a step back and see how this decision could impact my wife. How could this decision impact my kids? How can this decision impact our careers, right? Because in my role as a husband, I gotta see the bigger picture. Not saying you're gonna be perfect, but I believe that's part of our roles of our family is we got to see the bigger picture, right? We got to work and strive to see, see the bigger picture. We can't be short-sighted. We can't be like, you know what? Let me make this decision. Let me take this job right here because I can make money, a lot of money right here. But you don't know the long-term effect of you taking that job right now. Maybe you pass on that job and you take this opportunity and maybe the money may be slow at first, but because you thought and you step back to look at the long-term picture, your kids may benefit more because you took that picture. You may get more quality time with your spouse because you took because you took the time to take a step back and see how this would play down the road, right? But even as parents, when we're raising our kids, our kids don't truly understand everything we're telling them at that time. So if I'm telling my son, like, look, yo, bro, like, dog, take take a step back from the TV. He like, daddy, man, why I got to take? Bro, take a step back from the TV, right? In his mind, he like, man, I'm, I'm enjoying Paw Patrol. Like, this is my show, dad. But I, as his parent, Brittany, as his mom, as his parent, we could see the bigger picture. We know that, hey, yo, if you watch TV that close for a long amount of time, that this is what can happen, right? So in life, in certain roles that we play in, we got to take a step back and see the bigger picture, right? Because we got people depending on us. We got people that, that, that are trusting us that we will make this good decisions now, but, but decisions that will not only be good right now, but that'll be good uh, six months down from the, you know, down the road or maybe a year down the road. So we got to be, you know what I'm saying? We got to be, you know, look at the big, bigger picture and understand that, that things have domino effects, right? But, but not only just, you know, in, in certain aspects of our lives, like, you know, when opportunities come or in certain roles of our lives, do we have to make sure we take a step back and see the bigger picture, right? But also, we, we got to be, we got to come to the point and realize when maybe we're not in the position to see the bigger picture. And maybe it's not our responsibility to see the bigger picture. And, and, and we have to, we have to exercise exercise faith that those who are in control or maybe our supervisors or those who are in higher positions that that they see the bigger picture and we got to trust that that they know what they're doing right so so for for one we can start about our relationship with god like there are things that transpire in our life that confuse us right we could we can we can ask God for the answers. God, like, why is this happening? I don't get it. And, and, and he might give us a piece of the puzzle. You know, God, God don't give us the whole box, the puzzle box. God be dropping off like just little pieces of the puzzle. You feel me? Like this piece and that piece. And you're like, okay, God, I got that corner piece, but I need that other corner piece so I can make things match. But God just like, I'm gonna just give y'all all the corners. So you see where the corner's at, but I ain't gonna give you the fill-in. And so when we get in life, right, and, and God give us corner pieces. And even when we try to take a step back and see the see the bigger picture, God's like, look, 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 this ain't a time for you to see the bigger picture. This is a time for you to exercise faith and trust that I see the bigger picture. You get what I'm saying? So, so, so in one case, we, 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 as a husband or, or as a parent, you're seeing the bigger picture for your kids or or when it's job opportunities, you take a step back and see, hey, how this opportunity can impact not only you, but impact your, your family, not just right now, but down the road. But then there are times when God says, look, hey, I'm only going to give you these puzzle pieces and you got to trust that I see the bigger picture. Right. And, and, and you know, just going through certain things and, and you know, uh, lately and going through adversity or 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 having to make decisions about opportunities. It was like God dropped certain puzzle pieces. And I'm like, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what this means. And, and, and as time has rolled out, I'm like, dang, like, OK, God, I see what you're doing. now. I didn't see it at first. 
but I had to exercise faith and trust that God knows what he's doing. Think about your life. Like, like, right. I remember when someone told me, right. So I was getting ready. I committed to MTSU. And I, I remember uh, back in Florida, somebody was like, bro, why you, why you committed to the Sun Belt, bro? Like, why you committed to the Sun Belt? I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, dang, it's D1. Like, like, bro, at least I'm going D1. I'm about to XYZ. And he was like, bro, you should have committed. You could, you should have committed to, to the Mac because the Mac throw more. So I'm like, imagine if I would have listened to him, right? So that was his, he was, he, he couldn't see the big picture. All he was looking at was, you play DB, the Mac throw the ball more, and you can get more interceptions, right? But God seen the bigger picture. See, God's like, look, bro, I got you covered with the interceptions. I got you covered. But God, like, look, I'm really sending you to, to, to MTSU. Yeah, you're going to have a good career, all this. But I'm sending you to meet your wife, right? Because if you go over here to the Mac for some interception, you're going to miss out on your wife. You can miss out on your kids. So God's like, look, I see the bigger picture, dog. I ain't worried about them little interceptions you that homeboy trying to tell you to do. But 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 I see the bigger picture. So God's like, yo, you think you going to MT to try to make it to the league. And I'm sending you to MT because I want you to meet your wife. Who gonna be the mother of your kids? You get what I'm saying? So, so, so God is like, yo, I got the big picture. I see the big picture. And there are times when he won't allow us to see the big picture. And we got to exercise faith that he got everything under control, right? So, so that's one thing that, hey, you know what, God, I can't see the bigger picture. You see the bigger picture. So I trust you. But, but the same thing goes for on our jobs, right? We, we, Many of us are employees. I'm an employee, right? I don't always agree with what my boss tell me to do. It doesn't always make sense, right? But, okay, I still do it because the boss told, this is what they told me to do. And so in those situations, I got to have faith that those who are my supervisor or those who run this whole thing that, see, they got to, they see the bigger picture, so, so they see, they understand, hey, look, hey, look, we need y'all to do this because by you doing this, this going to allow us to do this. And if you, and this allows us to do this, and then it'll work in this way, right? Because the people that are supervisors, the people that are the bosses, they see the bigger picture. The employees, we, we don't see the bigger picture. We be like, man, ain't no way, man. Why I got to clean the bathroom, dog? Like, why I got to go do this? Man, tell them to come do this. Why, why I got to make all these lesson plans, right? But the people that are higher than me, they see a bigger picture than I do. I'm right here. I see it face on. I'm on the front lines. It's just like in the military. You get you get this command from, 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 from your general, and the general see the bigger picture. You just on the front line, right? But you got, that's when the faith kick in that, hey, look, man, I got to trust that who's ever in charge, who's ever, you know what I'm saying, above me or my superior that 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 they know what they're doing just like as a player they might be man jk blitz the a gap man come on bro blitz the a gap coach you know them big old centers down there them big old guards you want me to blitz the a gap the coach like look i game plan because what Cause diaz he the d coordinator he see the bigger picture he like yo bro i didn't watch film all this week I know that that when we blitz the A, we got we gonna get home. And me, in my mind, I'm like, Cole, man, you just sitting me another get killed, Cole. You tripping, Cole? But Cole Diaz, like, no, I see the bigger picture. Trust me. Running up, blitzing the gap, got a sack. Why? And so that's me exercise, exercising faith, not being able to see the big picture, but trusting that those that are in higher positions are able to see the big picture. I remember um, I was talking to to my uh, my father in law, right? I was talking about. Um, TSU, right? So, in my opinion, I'm like, man, TSU need to go to the MEAC or the SWAT. They need to go I'm, I'm, because when they play HBCU, TSU sell out. TSU fans, they're going to go, right? They don't get a lot of fans when it comes to the OBC, right? So, in my mind, I'm like, it makes sense for TSU to just go to the SWAC or go to the MEAC, right? But my, my father-in-law did some research, right? So, this is me. I see the situation for what it is. I don't see the big picture, right? So my father-in-law did some research. He's like, hey, look, Jeremy, man, I seen what 
uh, athletic director, somebody for the school said, they was like, yeah, you know, most people think it's just an easy transition that, hey, okay, yeah, we, we pay the buyout and we take our football team to the SWAT, but what happens to all the other programs? What happens to golf? What happens to softball? What happens to all this? And I was like, whoa. I was like, dang, I didn't think about that. I was like, I'm thinking about, hey, look, TSU, go to the SWAT, football, go get that money, right? But the people in higher positions than me that can see the big picture, they like, mm -mm, it's not that simple. Like, yeah, our football team could go over there and thrive, but what about all the other college student athletes that may lose a program if we chose to do that? So we're going to stay in the OVC, right? So that was a, 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 a perfect example of, dang, like, I'm not in the position to see the bigger picture. And if I'm not in the position to see the bigger picture, I got to trust the people that are in the position to see the bigger picture to, that, that they will do the right thing based on the, the vantage, vantage point that they have. All right. So uh, definitely be sure to strive to see the bigger picture in your roles. All right. So whatever role that may be, take a step back, strive to see the bigger picture. And then there are areas in our life and times in our life where we just ain't going to see the bigger picture. And that's when we got to exercise faith that one, God sees the bigger picture. And when we look at it on, on, on a, uh, when we look at it on like a, a more human aspect, uh, less spiritual, we got to trust that our bosses, our CEOs, um, we got to trust that the people that you hire to put in them positions, that they see the bigger picture. You know what I'm saying? So um, I definitely, uh, I see uh, some different comments. So y'all already know what time it is. We're going to transition to um, the tell them, tell them segment of the uh, episode. All right. So uh, with this segment right here, y'all can go ahead, drop any uh, question comment that y'all got for me um you know what i'm saying i know since i last time we had it you know the super bowl has come um you know uh we we in basketball season but dame uh dame dollar going crazy stuff going crazy um you know, i mean we could talk about this you know see the bigger picture so i'm gonna start going through some comments um so go ahead man drop comments in the chat on instagram or facebook uh, like I say, man, this tell them, kill them portion of Tackle Thursday. You can ask me any question or make any comment. It could be pertaining to the topic that we're talking about today, um, that we're tackling, see the bigger picture. Or um, it could just be, you know, something, you know, you might want to say to me or talk to me or comment or, or whatnot. Um, so I definitely going through Facebook right now. Appreciate you, Tina. Thanks for getting on. I got Brian, uh, AJK, huge AZ Rattlers fan, I'm sure. Those days you plan for them. Um, what you're saying today, I definitely need to hear that. Thank you. Uh, you and your family stay safe. Hey, appreciate that, Brian. Hey, appreciate that, man. I see the Rattler season. They had to push it back a little bit, man. So hopefully they go ahead and get started soon, man. Definitely miss them AZ days. Definitely miss my AZ family. Um, you know, I lived out there what uh what like four uh four seasons. So um, just the, the bond, the connections, my church family, AZ Rattler family, just Arizona family in general. Um, definitely. I appreciate it. I'm glad to hear that, man. Um, you know, uh, to God be the glory, man, on, on you being blessed by, you know, what he's sharing through me today, man. So, so definitely. I appreciate you getting on. Um, let me see some other questions, comments. Let me get on here. I appreciate y'all getting on. I see my dogs then got on here. Appreciate y'all. So many people from the crib, Fort Lauderdale, my boy Fry. What's up, Melvin, man? Hey, happy birthday again to you, man. I know it kind of snowed in. All right. The foundation was stand after the storm, definitely. My boy hit me helper. Um... The people without the offers are <laughs> Hey, hey, bro, hey, that's hilarious though. But nah, it, 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 like they say, man, it says, they say that, uh, what they say, um, the most noise comes from the cheapest seats, right, at the stadium. So it's just, I think that's just part of life. You get what I'm kind of saying? And, you know, people gonna always share their opinion with you, right? And I think that, you know, we all got the right to share our opinion. But 
but it's all it's it's my job or it's your job or it's it's our job as people to vet the opinions that people give or the advice people give. You get what I'm saying? So so you know even like when I was talking about it um, on my last show with with my parents, you know um, you know we talked about what's tackling being a parent of a college athlete. Like yeah, my mama had advice, my dad had advice, you know where I should go, but ultimately, you know I had to take a step back, look at the bigger picture. I'm like, hey, if I go to MTSU, I could play right away. If I go to MTSU, it's closer to home. If I go to MTSU, we got Nike jerseys. I ain't even gonna lie, that was a, that was a part. If I go to MTSU, we, we gonna be playing on TV. If I go to MTSU, I'm playing in Fort Lauderdale. I'm playing in Florida once every year. Every year I'm playing in Florida. So when I say I took a step back, to look at the bigger picture before I made my decision. Yeah, I heard my mom, I heard my dad, I heard what the dude said. Oh man, you should go to the mat cause they throw the ball more, I heard all of that. But I still gotta take a step back and look at the bigger picture and make the decision based off of, you know, what I believe is best. You know what I'm saying? What I believe God was saying to me to, 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 to do. Um, and, you know, and not every decision we make it's gonna go perfect. Maybe not every decision may be the right one, um, and it's easy. Like you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. But the thing is, you like like uh, my, my pastor Bishop Walker say, you know, paralysis, um, you know, uh, by analysis, right? That you could you could overthink a situation so much to where you don't make a decision, and so that's what you don't want to do, right? You don't want to overthink a situation so much to where you don't make a choice or you don't make a decision. But you don't want to you don't want to hastily make a decision either. So it's it's a healthy balance. Like, hey, did you did you ponder? Did you pray over it? Did you weigh out the options? Did you, did you go through the decision making steps? Um, you know what I'm saying out there? Did you look at the alternative outcomes, the alternative choices? And if you did all those things, and then you come to a decision, and then you just roll with it. You just rock with it. You know what I'm saying? There were times in my in my my career at MTSU where. Yeah, it crossed my mind, man. Dang, did I make the right decision when I seen when I seen FAU go to the bowl game? My first, my freshman year and win. I was like, uh oh, maybe I didn't make the right decision, right? But I stuck with it though. I stuck with it because that's what was meant for F FAU. But two years later, I'm in a New Orleans bowl. A year later after that, I'm in the GoDaddy.com bowl. So, um. That's where I think we got to understand that 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 there are times when we do make a decision that you may feel some regret or you may feel like, man, did I make the right decision? But, you know, you get to a point, sometimes you got to pivot and, and, and maybe you go back to choose that or you just keep trucking and say, OK, you know, uh, maybe it's a little rough right now, but I'm going to persevere. I'm going to see it through. And, and then things start to turn in your favor. Um, um, so definitely, man. But but yeah, it'd be the people that that uh that maybe didn't have an offer or maybe didn't get the opportunity you got that's telling you that the opportunity you got now won't work right so it's like they're trying to cast on you their fears that they've had or they're trying to tell you why it won't work because it didn't work for you i mean because because it didn't work for them so because it didn't work for them they trying to tell you why it won't work for you and I, I don't really think like that, man. I, I look at it as like every situation is different. And I think about like, why can't I be the one person that it works for? Not saying you go do something that's, you know, outrageous, but why do I have to believe that just because it didn't work for you, that it won't work for me? You know what I'm saying? Because what may not be meant for you may be meant for me. What may not be meant for me might be meant for you. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's how I kind of look at it too, man. Um, but definitely. Uh, so let me see if I got any other questions, comments. Um, okay. Uh, yo, did you shout out the D line in the post game interview for clearing those guards and the center? Hey, out for you on that. Hey, guy. Hey, I did it. Hey, D Smitty holding it down. Swainsboro, stand up, dog. Hey. Um, nah, bro, I didn't, I didn't shout out, I should, didn't shout out the D-line, bro, but shout out to D-Smitty, uh, uh, my boy Lattimore, uh, E. Walden, um, uh, McCoy, man, if I miss you, my bad, man, Tucker, uh, G-Tuck, man, 
Uh, man, so many more that I can just go on and on, man, about, man. But, but yeah, definitely shout out to the D-line because hey, if it weren't for y'all doing y'all stunts, I wouldn't be able to bl blitz the A-gap, man. So, nah, I did give him a shout out, but I, you got your shout out now, uh, right there, bro. And, 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 and congrats, man, to you and your wife, man, on, on, uh, on, on, on your newborn, man. Shout out to y'all, man. You know, she from the crib, so definitely got to uh, rep. Uh, for her, man. So uh, definitely. So let let's see if I got any more. Um, hey, appreciate you. Hey, I appreciate your support, man. All love and support, dog. Appreciate you. Uh, even when I went on on my YouTube and I seen how many views I had on that video, I know it was definitely um a lot to do with you, man. Spreading the word, man. So so I definitely appreciate that, D Smitty, dog. Uh, most definitely, bro. Appreciate it, man. You keep up the great work with your program and changing lives man sending boys the mt and um uh, just all over the country man so i know uh you know whenever you get a bye week or something you'll probably come catch a game and hopefully i'll be there too man and and we could chop it up reminisce you know what i'm saying still got my little smitty dance though with it too though hey but appreciate you though bro appreciate you man so definitely man um you know what i'm saying if y'all got any other questions comments um you know this is the the tell them kill them portion of Taco Thursday with JK where you can ask me any question. Um you can uh you know we could talk about the topic, comment on the topic we tackling today, see the seeing the bigger picture, see the bigger picture. Um you can ask me questions man about my about sports, what's going on, um my my past career, college, being a dad, being a husband, uh you know the whole nine man. So you know how is it how was it getting my son first haircut? How is he now at three getting a haircut? Uh, you know, you know, um, let me see. Okay, Melvin, what's for you? It's for you. Stay in your own lane. Definitely, man. Definitely. Um, I think that that gives me so much peace um now. Melvin, you know what I'm saying? That 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 thinking, that perspective. Uh, because I think that, you know, when you sit back in life sometimes, and I think, you know, it's hard when you when you look around and you see people that started where you are and they may be doing what you wanted to do, right? As a human, that's hard. I don't care who you are. That's hard to sit back and watch, right? But then I think that we got to check ourselves and our ego and say, look, man, like, you know what I'm saying? That was for them. It ain't no reason to hate on them or her. Um, that's what God had for them. But, but, but also God got something special for me. And, and 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 definitely, you know what I'm saying? I, I just look at it like me and my home, me and my dog, man, my best friend Brutus, we we always talk about it, man. Like everybody cut the line somehow. Everybody cut the line. So while you looking at something like this was me, I was like, man, how so and so playing in the league? Like, God, look at my stats, his stats. Like, I should be in the NFL, but 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 I had to realize, like, you know, talking to my dog Brutus, and and and, and you know, God revealed it to me, like, Jeremy, everybody cut the line. Like, so where you thought you was deserving in one area, Jeremy, you ain't deserving in another area. You know what I'm saying? Like, like me get, being blessed to do the ESPN game. It's been so many people that went to school for, for broadcasting, that been in broadcasting for so long that didn't, didn't have the opportunity yet to call a game on ESPN. And then me, somebody that somebody that didn't i kind of went to school for it but it's not like that that's what i've been doing over the years but god blessed me with the opportunity so in other words god blessed me to cut the line right so so where i might have felt slighted when it came to football god blessed me to cut the line when it came to broadcasting to a certain extent so we got to understand and look in the mirror that hey there are areas in our life where god blesses us to cut the line look at your job are you the most qualified for your job? Are you the most deserving for your job? Or in certain areas? In some cases, yeah, maybe not. But that's when we got to understand that, hey, God blessed us to cut the line in some cases. God blessed other people to cut the line in some cases. So instead of us hating on people that he blessed to cut the line, how about we appreciate where he's blessed us to cut the line 
and, and, and celebrate those in the areas that he blessed them to cut the line in maybe and not with us. Right. So so that's that's kind of that mindset in, in that what God got for you. God got for you. Stay in your own lane, uh, Melvin. So definitely uh, with that. So I see you. Uh, you said, how has it been a dad and being responsible for something bigger than yourself? <laughs> uh, I mean, man, it's, it's, it's a great feeling, uh, but definitely a lot of pressure. Um, I think. I think right now, I think now being a parent for, you know, still a young parent, but being a parent for three years, I don't think I feel as much pressure, uh, you know, but I think, I think when I first was about to have my son, I was like, oh man, like, you know, I got this whole family now, like. I got, you know, cause I think being a husband, you like, you feel that pressure. Like I got to take care of my wife. Like she depending on me, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, and it's a teamwork. So we work off each other. We depend on each other. But as a man, as a husband, like I'm the covering of this family. Um, you know what I'm saying? So then bringing the kid, I'm like, whoa, that's a bigger responsibility. Cause now who my son and what my son and now my daughter, what they grow up to be and become, or their examples of stuff is going to be from what I show them. So now, you know, my responses to things aren't just for me. My responses for things are for my kids to see. You know what I'm saying? So even though it was already important for me to treat my wife right, it's even more important now that I got kids to treat them right. So, so because like you said, it's bigger than me. So even like decisions I make, you know what I mean? Um, when I was, you know, when I was single, when me and Brittany was just, you know, we were dating single as far as not married, not sing like single, single, we was dating. But when I was playing and it was, you know, we weren't engaged yet, you know, um, I was going back and forth and playing. But now, like, I, when when opportunities present themselves, it ain't just what I want to do. I got to be like, okay, is this going to be good with the wife? And how is this going to impact her? How is it going to impact, you know, my kids? Is it good for them? So I think that... Uh, the pressure I feel like to a certain point has subsided, um, but it, it it's still there though. It's still there, and I I think that knowing that I may not always be obviously they're gonna grow up and go to school, so I'm not gonna be always there to protect them. So I think that is hard, difficult for me, like relinquishing that. Um, you know, understanding that man, dang, he gonna bump his knee one day. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like he might be playing sports, he might take a hard hit, and I can't stop him from getting that hit. But he gonna have to learn how to, you know what I'm saying, bounce back from that. So I think that as a parent, I see now when my parents was like, man, dang, you know, I know you broke your ankle. I wish I could take the pain away from you. And I realize what they mean now because, you know, I wish I could do that for my kids, but understanding that. That will only enable them. That will only coddle them. So um, that that that's how my experience and and just realizing that you know I'm doing something. I'm living uh, for something bigger than myself. And, and definitely with all that I'm doing, I want to leave a legacy for them. Um, you know what I'm saying? I want them to be able to cut the line in life because of who their parents are. You know what I'm saying? Like like even though I'm not a cowboy fan and, and you know I'm not all for you know everything Jerry Jones do, but what Jerry Jones did with the Cowboys, hiring all his kids, grandkids, that's how you're supposed to do it. You know what I'm saying? So I want to live a life to where, like, hey, son, look, bro, you got this. Jayla, you got this. Like, man, that's how I mean, Brittany, we want to lead that legacy because it's bigger than us. And we want to give them, we want to allow them to start way ahead than what we started. And then when they leave stuff back for their kids, you know what I'm saying? For our grandkids, we want our grandkids to start even further ahead. So, um, but yeah, man, that's that's how it is, man, for 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 me personally, just being a father, man. Um, it is pressure. Um, I felt more when I first began to um to be a father. Um, but but now, you know, I don't I'm not gonna say I think about it all the time, but but I definitely know my role is bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? So that was a good question though, Melvin, man. Appreciate that. And I mean, I know you can relate, man. Definitely with your with your kids, man. And I see the IFL, um, you know what I'm saying, season got pushed back, you know what I'm saying? Uh supposed to start in May. So I'm looking forward to watching watching your son play, man, too. So uh definitely with that. Uh how many offers did I have? Uh how many offers are I did I have? So I that's a good question too. I don't think I've ever been asked that question. Um I I 
I think I I had had four four offers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I had um, uh, yep, May 15, May 15. Um, I had offer from MTSU, Western Michigan, Bowling Green. I was being recruited. I had a visit to Marshall that I didn't take. Um, I just I, the relationship with the recruiter, it just I wasn't really feeling feeling it, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it wasn't like that connection. Uh, so I didn't, uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so my kids just called me, Jake, my daughter and son just called me on the phone. So that's why my video paused. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I had Marshall and then I had fam, you talking to me. So officially probably three. Um, but I had FIU, fam, you, and then Marshall. So that might have been about uh what is that? Six, six potential schools that I could have went to. Um, you know, looking back, I probably should have took a visit though to fam though, you know, just to 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 just see what a HBCU is and um embrace that, you know what I mean? But but I don't think that when I was in school, like man, we were so uh, blind to the importance of HBC, you know what I'm saying? We were all about D1, 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 um, and I think that's why I love what 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 Dion is doing with Jackson State and Coach Simmons with with Fam U, um, you know, just really bringing back the the notoriety and and, and bringing back the the prestige, uh, you know, the greatness. Um, amongst you know the hbcu so so it was six man six schools six schools um i guess i could kind of tell you why i didn't go to so i didn't go to western michigan because western michigan they they had young dbs so um i heard rg3 say this right robert griffin um the third right heisman winning trouble he said talent respects talent so i wasn't scared to go and compete right but talent respects talent. So my thinking was, why would I go to Western Michigan where, you know, they got a sophomore safety and a sophomore corner. They had sophomores playing. I was like, you know, yeah, I could go and play, but how much playing time would I really get if they got sophomores playing starting? So they got three more years. And both of them dudes, EJ Biggers um, and uh, Lewis Delmas, both from Miami, um, they 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 both went to the league. You know what I'm saying? So talent, respect talent. So that's why I didn't go there. That was one of the main reasons. And then another reason was they never showed me where I would be living. We were driving. They was like, yeah, let's go to they go to freshman dorms, but we taking you to the apartments. I'm like, well, how am I supposed to really see where I'm gonna be living at? Because the only way you get to the apartments is you had to have a high enough GPA. Uh and then man, they had brown in their uniforms. And you know, I know that's shallow, but I'm just keeping it a book. I was like, I ain't trying, and they was a, you know, uh, yeah, I didn't really like the brand that they was um, sponsored by at the time either. So they had brown in their uniforms. So I was like, nah, you know. So uh, that was kind of why I didn't go there. Bowling Green, they were under a lot of uh, reconstruction, a lot of uh, remodeling, like they weight room. When we got there, it was, it was, it just wasn't appealing. And you know, so that was me back in '07. So even more now, your facilities got to be up to date because kids really get blinded by the glitz and glamours instead of looking deeper so so with with uh bowling green it was just i didn't like the gray skies that's what i don't one thing i don't like about tennessee is when when the sky when the whole day is gray ah man i can't stand that that you know that because i feel like the weather really can dictate your morale and i grew up in sunny south florida so it's sunny all the time. So going to taking a visit to, to, to Bowling Green, Ohio, and just seeing it be gray all day, I was like, nah, that ain't that ain't really it. And and I just really didn't connect with the players on my visit either. I had a good host, but I didn't really connect with them. That was my first time I had Waffle House though, uh, on that visit. Uh, you know, cause in Florida it's Denny's. We big on Denny's and then IHOP. Um so going up there the Waffle House, you know, that was my first experience in Ohio with Waffle House. Uh, um, mm, season effective disorder. All right, gotcha. I appreciate that that dropping gems for me, Melvin. Though season effective disorder. So yeah, so I I probably you know was experiencing some type of you know uh, similar experience to that. Uh, and then 
I told you why I didn't go to Marshall. Didn't have a connection there. Uh, FIU, the the head coach, uh, Cristobal, Mario Cristobal, he the head coach at Oregon now. He was at FIU, and he came in the pitch. He just got hired at FIU. He was like, man, you know, we want you to do And it was like so late in the game that we couldn't build a relationship. And I had already built a relationship with Coach Stock, Coach Diaz. And so that's why I chose to, uh, I chose to, um, I didn't choose to go to FIU. And then FAMU, the coach at, the head at, the, at that time, the head coach at that time was actually like from Fort Lauderdale or had ties or where like my mom knew him. Um, my mama played fullback too on the streets too, like. That's why I get some of my athletic ability from my mom, man. She was a fullback playing street football. But but that was a side note. But yeah, so my mom kind of knew him. But like once again, I didn't take a visit there, and uh, you know I, I didn't have that relationship. So so that's kind of what what went into like me going to MT. It was the academics. It was the ability to play early right away. Um, we were gonna play on TV a lot. It was closer to home, and we had Nike jerseys, and we had a new turf field. Uh, it was just, it was just really, for me, it was up and coming, you know what I'm saying? And it, and it just really matched, uh, with, 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 you know what I'm saying? With me and my personality, man. So, um, that's, that's, that, that's, you know, those are the schools that offer me or uh, were interested in me. And th that's the reason I kind of went, you know, where I did go, man. So, hey, that was a good question though, man. Uh, you know, feel free, man, to drop. Any more comments, questions, gems like my boy Melvin just did with, with season effective uh, disorder. Um, definitely, man. If y'all got any other questions uh, for me, man, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, any other questions uh, for me, I, I, I'll i be glad to to ask. I got to say this is probably like the favorite part of doing Taco Thursday is just being able to converse back and forth with uh, you all, man, um, you know, rocking with me. I rock with y'all. I appreciate the support. Uh, so definitely, if y'all got any other questions, um, man, we could talk about your upcoming football season. We could talk about um, whatever y'all want to talk about. If not, you know, and I give it probably a, about 30 more seconds if no other question or comment comes in. And then, I, you know, I allow you all to be able to uh, be able to go. All right, so uh, once again, man, um, so I'll begin to wrap up, and then anybody put a question in or comment, i address it. Uh, definitely, once again, man, it's Taco Thursday with JK Live, man, on Facebook Live, on Instagram Live. Um, man, we tackling the topic, see the bigger picture. Um, right. See the bigger, see the bigger picture, man. And just understanding that in our roles in life and some roles that we have that, that, that people are dependent on us to see the bigger picture. Right. So as a, as a husband, my, my wife and kids depend on me to see the bigger picture. Um, as parents, man, my wife, our kids, right. They don't see the bigger picture, but we, as we raise them, we see the bigger picture, which, um, ultimately guys and how we parent or what we tell them, Hey, Hey, you're not able to do this right now. You shouldn't do it. You can do this or why to do that. Um, but then also understanding that in life, right, we are in positions sometimes where we don't have the opportunity to see the bigger picture at all. And that's when faith has to kick in that those that are in our bosses and in, in superior positions than us, um, uh, that, that is why, you know, we have to exercise and put faith in them that they see the bigger picture. So they know what's best, but more importantly, even in our lives, we don't always see the bigger picture. Um, but, but that's where our faith in God has to come in that he sees the bigger picture and he's working everything out. Um, why does the community not support MTSU sports? Man, Melvin, hey, that's a good question, man. So this is what I believe. I don't know if it's right, but this is what I believe, right? So I think that MTSU obviously is not the the home state school. University of Tennessee is the home state school, right? And so um, it has been that way forever, right? Volunteer State, Tennessee Volunteers. And so as a result, right, um, you have so many people who've graduated from UT, right? And then they, so they support the school, then they have kids, right? And they raise them to be UT supporters. So even if their kids never go, cause everybody can't get into UT or everybody can't go to UT, 
But even if they don't go to UT, that, uh, that allegiance to the school is so strong that they will even go to MTSU and rock orange shirts. Why? Because there is no connection. There is no bond, right? Now, I truly believe that as this new wave, because you see more and more MTS students, like, because I think, because I believe uh, MTSU, I remember hearing <laughs> uh, President McPhee say that we are the largest undergraduate institution in the state of Tennessee as far as the number of, of people. I don't know if that still stands. So I got to believe that as these people continue to graduate and have kids, that they're going to raise them up to be true blue. Um, but I just think, I think the, uh, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So I just think that the ties are so strong to, to University of Tennessee that they will rather drive all the way to UT and watch a game than to come to an MTSU game. Or they will rather go to a bar or stay home and watch a UT game on TV than to drive 15 minutes to a Division I foot school and watch Division I football be played at MTSU. So I just think, one, it starts with the, 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 the uh, tradition. I think MTSU lacks tradition as far as, like, our roots aren't as deep. I'll take that back. I don't think it lacks tradition. I'll just say I think UT's roots go deeper. And they could they touch more generations. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you might have somebody in my age group that um, you know what I'm saying, maybe you know, even a little older than me, like the 40s and 45, 50, they might be true blue. You get what I'm saying? But it's some 80 year olds, it's some 70 year olds, 60 year olds who true orange. And they kids and they grandkids and they grandkids, grandkids, like they're true orange. So I think that's why they lack support. Um, cause the tickets aren't expensive. Um uh the the the, the tickets aren't ex uh aren't, aren't expensive at all. Um so that that's my opinion on it. And and so you said, let me check yours out. You said I think because it's a commuter school as well, and students go home on weekend and not support the sports. Bingo, that's a good point too. Yeah. It's a commuter school, definitely. So um and I don't know why. I don't, I don't know. That's a good point. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, I guess I do know why to a certain extent because so I guess like in Knoxville, which is probably not a commuter school, but Knoxville is like, that's it in Knoxville, right? But in Murfreesboro, you got these big cities around Nashville and you got all the, you know, even you think about Clarksville and stuff that it's like, hey, I can go to a school MTSU right down the street don't have to live on campus, or if I live on campus, I could go home on a weekend. Um, that definitely makes sense. So, so I definitely think that's a problem. That's an issue too. Um, that that kids go home on the weekends, right? They do, uh, and and that's why I think in Florida, right? You look at FAU. The same thing I thought about FAU. FAU is um, they got a brand new stadium. Been you know about like five years old. That that's like a brand new stadium, right? And and we think about stadiums, it's not that old, right? So. But it's hard to sell out in FAU. Why? Because it's a commuter school and it's so much to do in Florida. So it's like either they going to go to the UM game, University of Miami game, or they going to the beach. They going to the mall. It's in Boca Raton. You know what I'm saying? So I think where your school is definitely plays a, a factor. Now, if we were just in an all college town like like Knoxville, and it ain't nothing to do but go to the game, or Tuscaloosa, Alabama, it ain't nothing to do but go to the game, then yeah, it, I think the support would be different. So I never really looked at it like that. That was a good one, uh, Melvin too. Um, that that is definitely a commuter school, man. I and it hurts my heart, man, because I think that when we went ten and three, I just knew. That we was about, I'm like, oh, well, we went 10 and 3. We had the best record in school history. We just coming off a bowl win. We had we was tied for the longest winning streak in the nation. I'm like, we got all this going. And still, the stadium, cause I think it's fit, what, 30,000, I think? Man, like, we, we weren't even reaching 80% capacity. Maybe not even 60% capacity. You know, and, and so that was disappointing. You know what I'm saying? It was very, very disappointing. Um, on why we couldn't get that support after having success. Even when I look at the basketball teams, like you would think we'd be selling out the Murphy Center. But even after 
getting NCAA tournament victories time after time. Our girls always been good. The boys start balling and start winning tournament games. Still the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, I don't know, man. Uh, Got to get some out the water, man. Uh, bruh, hey, I thought we were about to have that thing sold out. D. Smitty, I know you thought the same way. Like, bruh, hey, we about to have, hey, Johnny Red Floyd, we about to have that thing jumping. Man, you walk out there, you like, uh, hey, where everybody at? They at the crib? Like, you know, so um, it hurts, though, I think, as a, as a student athlete, man, it hurts when when you don't when you don't get that support or you get like yeah we might be getting blowed out in the game but still stay to the end you know what i'm saying like show show that like i like, think about you look at alabama when alabama they don't really lose but when they losing this side of fans be looking in the stands they be like this but they still in the game though you know what i'm saying they don't leave and now they just be like dang cuz we losing but they so dedicated to the cause that they'll stay through a loss Right. And, and so I think that's how we felt, too. It's like, OK, like, man, maybe we didn't start off, our, you know, the next year after we went 10 and 3, we didn't start off too hot. But come on. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, we got some faithful fans. You know what I'm saying? We got some faithful fans. We got amazing fans. I just think that we could have more fans and we should have more fans. And that I think that we've had a lot of success in the past couple of years, you know, over the last 10 years to where we should be getting more fans than 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 um we've been getting but i don't know man but that's definitely a good question though um good observation too so man mt fans please let's show up man let's let's you know i know you know when things get back to normal man let's make sure we show up show support man to to the student athletes man uh, let's be true blue for real um you know and support support them man but uh but definitely man if, if nobody else got any more comments questions i will definitely close it out so i'm gonna give about 15 more seconds anybody got any other question anybody got any other comment they want to make about taco thursday or you want to ask me um please do so within these next 15 seconds if not um i'll go ahead and close that thing out and uh, allow y'all to have a blessed rest of the night um so you know uh it's looking like that's what I'm about to go ahead and, and, and do. All right. So, man, once again, man, um, I appreciate y'all joining me, man. I'm JK, man. You uh, have just, you know, watched or witnessed or experienced uh, the Taco Thursday with JK, man, live on Facebook, live on um, IG, man. I appreciate y'all. Please go subscribe to my, my, my Facebook page, uh, my, my YouTube page, right? Jeremy Kellum um win we impact now so man if you type in jeremy kelly it, it'll come up so subscribe i put my videos on there i put other type of content on there as well man so i, I appreciate that love and support uh tune in every thursday man talk of thursday with jk it might just be me by myself or i might have a guest as well man so once again i appreciate the love and remember right I'll strive, strive to see the bigger picture. And when you don't have the opportunity to see the bigger picture, trust that one, God sees the bigger picture in your life. He's working everything else out. And, and in other cases, like on job or opportunities, if you can't see the bigger picture, trust that those that may be your supervisor, that they see the bigger picture and exercise some faith that, that, that they know what they're doing as well. All right. So man, have a blessed day. Make sure y'all waking up. Y'all striving to win on purpose. Be intentional about winning, and y'all have a blessed day, man. Thank y'all.